Welcome to The Astrology Show with your host, Kelly Fox. Each week, Kelly will give you access to the current transits that are a valuable tool which provide astrological information to help unlock the potential each of us has through our sun sign. Understanding the current planetary influences each week can help steer us in the right direction to make better informed choices. Sometimes events in your life may seem completely random, but there is a pattern to the order of these events. One set in motion in part by you and in part by the planets and stars in the sky and their influence on your life here on Earth. So if you're wondering what's going to happen in your week ahead, if you're going to get that promotion, move to a new city, or fall in love, tune in to The Astrology Show for guidance. It can help you anticipate problems before they occur, give you tools to cope with changes, and help you look forward to the wonderful days ahead. Kelly Fox is a professional astrologer and internet pioneer who launched Astrology.com, one of the first and most successful astrology websites. Today, her passion lies with her new site, TheAstrologer.com, where she brings a modern-day approach to an ancient wisdom. Please join Kelly each week to learn more about how the planets can align for you. Hi there, and welcome to The Astrology Show. I am your host and astrologer, Kelly Fox, and I'm going to be talking about the planets this week. And there is one big astro headline of the week, and that is the supermoon, blue moon, total lunar eclipse. Now, I'm going to break that down and tell you exactly what that means piece by piece. But just know on Wednesday, we have a total lunar eclipse that's occurring at 11 degrees of Leo. So if you're, if you're a Leo, this is news for you. This is big news. This is not just news of the week. This is news of the month, news of the year. Uh, also, if you're an Aquarian, this is affecting you or you have planets in any of the fixed signs and that's Taurus, Leo, Scorpio and Aquarius. You need to listen up here about uh, the lunar eclipse in Leo. Now, as I said, it's a total lunar eclipse that's occurring at 11 degrees Leo. Uh, the visibility of this total lunar eclipse so if you are in any parts of the world, uh, the Pacific Ocean, over the Pacific, this is where the eclipse will be occurring. Um, Central and Eastern Asia, which includes uh, Siberia, Philippines, Indonesia, New Zealand, and most of Australia, uh, you will get a fine view of this moon show in the evening sky. And this is Tuesday evening, you'll be able to see it. But the eclipse, the exact time of the eclipse will be 5.27 a.m. Pacific time, 8.27 a.m. Eastern time. So that's Wednesday morning. Uh, that's when the eclipse happens exact. Now, the thing with eclipses, and not just eclipses, but any sort of astrological influence, it's never right in the moment that some event happens uh, with eclipses and of course depending on where this sits in your natal chart uh, it will unfold under days weeks even months after and maybe even a little bit beforehand so the uh, effects of the eclipses uh, occur over a period of time depending on how strong this eclipse is on your natal chart or within your natal chart and if you haven't got your natal chart, you don't even know what I'm talking about, go to my website, new.theastrologer.com slash chart wheel to get your free chart wheel. And then each week on the show, you can follow along to see how the weekly planets are affecting you each time. So the chart wheel will give a snapshot of the sky at the moment you were born. Uh, so an accurate birth time is preferable. Uh, but to follow along each week to see where the planetary influences uh, and how they're affecting you and where they are and what they're doing to all of us, all you need is a date of birth to follow along each week. 
Now, so on tonight's show, I'm going to be talking about this total lunar eclipse, super moon, full moon, blue moon in Leo at 11 degrees. So I'm going to break that down for you and explain what all these terms with this eclipse means because this is not just a regular ho-hum eclipse and not that eclipses ever are, but this is a super duper charged uh, lunar eclipse full moon. So when you have a lunar eclipse, that's a supercharged full moon and full moons occur every 28 days. And then this particular uh, lunar eclipse is also a blue moon. And what a blue moon means is it's the second full moon in a calendar month. And it really doesn't have anything to do with astrology. It's just uh, fitting into a calendar, calendar month, uh, human-made calendar month, whereas astrology is not human-made. It's um, the cycles of nature and the Earth uh, in the orbit around the sun and within the solar system. So a blue moon means the second full moon of a calendar month. And the super moon, which we've had quite a few of lately, uh, the first, this is the second one of 2018. The first one was on January 1st, and it was a super full moon in Cancer. And so this is the second super moon of 2018, and this happens to be a lunar eclipse on top of a super full moon, and it's in Leo. And of course, it's a blue moon as well, which I said doesn't really have that much to do with astrology. So the total lunar eclipse occurring uh, Wednesday morning, if you're in the US, of course, uh, and it's going to be in Leo. Now, Leo is the sign that loves to be in the spotlight and let's just say eclipse everything around it. And so this Leo supermoon will eclipse the Aquarius sun uh, on Wednesday. Now, a full moon is when you've got the Earth in the middle and then you've got the sun on one side and the moon on the other. So there's this sort of like um, a pulling effect. Think of a tug of war with the moon in the middle. And you've got these two very strong energies on either side sort of pulling you in every direction. So think of this uh, moon in Leo and then the sun is in Aquarius. And just to add to the mix, because there's always something when it comes to astrology and these planetary energies, uh, we've got Venus. Venus is the planet of love. And Venus will be right next to the sun in Aquarius. Or let's say pretty close, not on top of, uh, but it's still considered a conjunction. So you've got the sun and Venus forming a conjunction in Aquarius. And then uh, that's opposing the moon because it's a part of this full moon. And then just to add to it, even more so, we've got Jupiter, planet of, well, let's just say in this case, excess, uh, because it's a square. Jupiter will be forming a T-square to the lunar eclipse full moon. Or uh, technically, I should say, the full moon is forming a T-square to Jupiter. So anytime um, you've got aspects, you always mention the planet uh, closest to the sun first uh, because technically within astrology, the aspect is formed by the, the faster planet affecting the slower planet. So in this case, uh, the technical, the correct way to say it is this uh, lunar eclipse, super moon, blue moon, full moon, fully charged, full moon, did I say that? Uh, is forming a T-square to Jupiter. So what that means is that both the sun and the moon, they're opposite each other, and then they're forming what we call a major configuration, which is a T-square uh, to to Jupiter in Scorpio. Now, this, this is really intense. If we thought that just a regular old full moon was intense, just keep adding and adding and adding to that. So you've got the full moon, which is already intense anyway every month in its cycle. Then you've got it being um, a lunar eclipse on top of that. And then it's a total lunar eclipse on top of that. And then you have um, you have this blue moon, which is sort of not really astrological, but a super moon, which means that the moon is closer to the Earth at this time. So with the moon being closer to the Earth than usual, it appears much bigger, like a lot bigger than usual. 
And I remember last month just looking at the moon thinking, oh, my goodness, this moon is gigantic. I don't even remember the moon being this big. So that's why this uh, supercharged blue moon, full moon, super moon is going to look uh, a lot bigger than what the moon usually does. And that's because it's closer to the Earth at this time. So there you have it. Oh, and of course, to make it even more intense, so just blowing it all up completely out of proportion is this um, T-square that the lunar eclipse is making to, Jup uh, yes, to Jupiter in Scorpio. So what that means is uh, a T-square is when you've got two planets opposite each other like the sun and the moon, and both are forming a square aspect, which is 90 degrees away from Jupiter. So Jupiter in, uh, Jupiter in Scorpio has been in the news a lot. I think it's really behind what we've been hearing with this Me Too movement. And what, what it means is Jupiter in Scorpio is unearthing the truth. Or uh, when you think of a full moon or the moon itself, it's all about illumination. So if you put all those keywords together, uh, this lunar eclipse is illuminating and more so because it's forming this T-square to Jupiter in Scorpio. So Jupiter in Scorpio is all about shining the light or revealing what has previously been hidden. So it's going to be really fascinating, uh, particularly in the news this week. And I don't get political on the show at all, uh, but it's interesting what's been going on in politics this week. And this might be the start, I would say, this, this particular eclipse of um, everything that's going to be going on in 2018. And if you, if you missed last week's show and the show before that, basically all the shows in, um, in January, you can find them on the On Time uh, archive. And be sure to go and listen because in last week's show I talked about Mars. Now, Mars, Mars in itself is very much about action and energy and assertion and sometimes aggression. Uh, and I talked about all the influences Mars was making this year. And it is definitely throwing fuel on the fire. Uh, and these eclipses and the eclipse uh, this week is the start of an ongoing, um, I'm trying to think of a word that even describes 2018 with all of these planetary influences, and I just can't think of one word. I don't know, it's, it's even more than volcanic. It's um, definitely a change of the status quo. Uh, transformation feels like it's undermining what's really going to be going on. But this eclipse is going to uh, be the start of the cycle. It's the first of five eclipses in 2018. Uh, and so this one in Leo is all about um, the spotlight and all eyes on me type of thing versus uh, the opposite sign of Aquarius where it's very much about everybody and everybody working together in a democracy and then you've got on the other hand uh, a dictator versus a democracy. This is the energy of Leo Aquarius. This is not even, I'm not even talking about politics necessarily. I'm just talking about, um, yeah, the energy of Leo with being part of this lunar eclipse supercharged moon um, opposing um, Aquarius, which is all about philanthropy and um, humanitarian causes and helping other people and we are all equal. It's this sort of energy that's going on. But the thing that lightens it up uh, is the involvement of Venus. Um, Venus is very close to the sun, both in Aquarius. And so this is very much about you know, loving one another, um, help thy neighbour, love thy neighbour, that type of thing. Uh, and then you've got the energy of this um, this dictator managerial sort of energy of Leo, which is part of the lunar eclipse. Regardless of anything, it's an intense, intense energy. Um, and sometimes sudden bursts of energy from this eclipse uh, will affect all of us at a gut or emotional level. Um, but this will be felt especially with people or by people that have um, any planets in fixed signs. So if that is you, and that's Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius. Uh, these eclipses of 2018, not just this particular eclipse, but uh, most of the eclipses, four out of five this year, 
uh, will be affecting the uh, fixed sign. So if that is you, I'm talking to you, I'm talking to everybody, but I'm really talking to you, fixed sign. Okay, so just taking a step back, uh, again, uh, what is a lunar eclipse? Uh, a lunar eclipse is when you have the sun and the moon and the earth in the middle. So it's sort of like an earth sandwich, I think is one way to think about it. Um, but it's, it's definitely these energies like a tug of war pulling uh, the earth from one side to another. Um, just sort of like this push-pull type of thing. Um, and this is a total lunar eclipse. Now there are four different types of eclipses, uh, lunar eclipse. And this particular eclipse is a total eclipse, which means it's the most extreme. So there we have it. We've got like this, as I said, this full moon, and then you've got the lunar eclipse, and then it's a total lunar eclipse, and then it involves Jupiter and Scorpio it's forming a, a T-square to it's, it's really, really intense. Uh, and as I keep saying, especially if you're a fixed sign or you have planets in fixed signs. So that's, that's about the lunar eclipse. Now, a little bit about Leo. Um, Leo's symbol is uh, king of the jungle, the lion. So Leo person, like represents um, leadership, um, as I said, managerial levels, leadership, and I'm not talking middle management, I'm talking like high level management. Think of, think of a lion. And they say, you know, a group of lions is known as the pride of lions. Uh, and, you know, leading, leading others. So Leo is king of the jungle, basically. So it represents leadership. Okay, on that note, we're going to take a short break. So stay tuned and I will continue with the lunar eclipse after the break. Conscious Media for Conscious Minds. Home Times. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit humanityhealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Hello, I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, host of Ong Times Magazine's flagship radio show, What is Going On? My passion is sifting through information, research and innovations from new thought teachers, speakers and researchers pushing back the boundaries of what we know about life, energy, metaphysics and the universe. I love shifting perceptions about who we are, why we're here, and how quickly impossible becomes normal when we open our minds, expand our awareness, and accept that the only limits that exist are those we place upon ourselves. So if you're the kind of forward-thinking, eager investigator of what lies beyond the current reality that most perceive, why not make a date to come play with me in the field of possibilities at 4 p.m. Pacific Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time every Thursday, and together we can discover what's really going on. Hi, this is John Andrasik of Five for Fighting, here for RAD, the entertainment industry's voice for road safety. You know, style is a personal thing, and your lifestyle is your business. But if you take it on the road, it becomes everybody's business. So please, plan ahead, designate before you celebrate. Friends, don't let friends drive drunk. A public service announcement brought to you by RAD, the National Association of Broadcasters, and the Ad Council. Hi there. Thanks for joining me. This is Kelly Fox, and this is The Astrology Show, and I am talking all about the lunar eclipse this week. Huge, huge, huge news. Not, of, not only of the week, the month, but the year. I don't want to be dramatic and say the decade. There's, there's other stuff going on this year as well, uh, and especially in this decade. But um, the lunar eclipse is pretty much big news because as I keep going on and on, it starts with the full moon, which we have every month. 
then it's a lunar eclipse, it's a total lunar eclipse. It's a super moon, which means the moon is closer to the Earth, so it's going to look huge. And because it's closer to the Earth, it's going to have more effects. Uh, and then Leo, which is a fixed sign, and it's opposing the Sun in Aquarius, which is next to Venus, planet of love. This is like anything goes, and especially if you have um, fixed planets in your chart. This is for you. There is so much going on. And as I was talking last week about Mars, Mars is like bouncing around and it's it's hooking into all these other fixed planets and the eclipses and Uranus and Venus retrograde towards the end of the year. It really is a time of change and transformation, but of a really big, big way. It's not just um, you know, a little change here and there. It's not about that. This is about letting go of things that are that are not working for you, especially if you're a Leo or Aquarius, this is all about your relationships. And I, I don't just mean, you know, your primary uh, romantic relationship. I'm talking about lots of relationships, lots of people around you. So anything that doesn't work for you, especially a relationship, it's time to let go. And I know it's easier said than done, especially if you're a fixed sign and fixed signs like to hold on to things. I have a reputation amongst let's say family members are being stubborn perhaps. So this is a time to let let go and move forward. Yes, easier said than done. So before the break I was talking about this lunar eclipse being in Leo. Um, Leo is symbolized by the lion, um, king of the jungle, which represents leadership. Um, Leo is also really good at um, at showing strength and courage, but if, I always think of like the Wizard of Oz and how the lion, is he the one that wanted a heart? So the flip side of Leo can be a little bit of fear, um, fear and lacking courage uh, for some Leos. So it's like we can't all be brave and strong all the time. Not Leos mostly are, but um, there's definitely a lot of strength there, but of course, with astrology, everything has a flip side. Everything uh, everything has a flip side or a shadow side. Not everything is fine and dandy, really. Uh, even though people might portray everything is fine and dandy in their life, uh, that's, that's not always true. So there's always a flip side to everything. So back to Leo and the meaning of Leo with this lunar eclipse in Leo. So what we can expect uh, from this lunar eclipse in Leo for all signs, not just particular signs. Um, Leo is all about drama as well. So I put all these key words together about what we can expect from this lunar eclipse in Leo. Think about um, so leadership, drama, and I'm not just talking world leadership, I'm talking within your own uh, office or whoever your boss might be. You know, there might be a little bit of drama going on. There usually is around the time of the full moon anyway. Um, but some some sort of drama with it. Um, Leos are always very exciting, um, always dramatic, and um, always stimulating. Uh, there's, there's always something going on. You know, Leos a fire sign. So this eclipse is, um, this eclipse is gonna be very fiery. And then on the other side with Aquarius, Aquarius is an air sign, so there, there's a lot of intellectualism going on at this time as well. Uh, and if you're single and you're looking, you're going to in a relationship or looking for a relationship, and you happen to be a Leo or Aquarius, uh, this is a great time for relationships because the Sun and Venus, Venus, planet of love, Venus is part of this uh, lunar eclipse. But again, there's a flip side to it, a shadow side. Uh, this lunar eclipse is forming a T square or a challenging a challenging aspect to Jupiter in Scorpio, which means uh, things are revealed. So with this lunar eclipse, it's all you know dramatic and exciting and things happening and people not necessarily agreeing because full moons or lunar eclipses are typically about projection. So it's like what we project onto others comes back to us. So I always think of full moons a bit like a mirror. So I'm looking in a mirror and I'm looking, or really I'm looking at someone else and I'm looking at their, you know, crass behavior, which could be possible with the energy of Leo. Their crass or brassy behavior or um, egotistical is another good word for a shadow side of Leo. 
looking at some sort of egotistical behavior, but really it's like a mirror project, projecting back at me. And I'm using these keywords because this is these are the keywords for Leo. And because there's some hard energies going on with this key square to Jupiter, Jupiter is all about excess and making things bigger or because it's in Scorpio, it's like Scorpio is a sign of secrets. And so with Jupiter, the planet of um, excess and um, philosophy and um, foreign places or faraway places, they're the key words that fit into this lunar eclipse as well. Uh, so Leo, as I said, is a fixed sign. I keep going on and on. Every show I feel like I'm talking about the fixed signs, but really 2018 is all about the fixed signs. 2017 was all about the cardinal signs, um, and that's Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn. Uh, so 2018 is all about the fixed signs. And the mutable signs, you're sort of off the hook. Uh, you're off the hook mostly, unless you have fixed signs or cardinal signs, which usually is most of us. So in some way, you know, in varying degrees, we're all affected by this extremely, extremely intense total lunar eclipse, supermoon, blue moon, um, all in Leo. So Leo loves to be the center of attention. Um, and I would say a good drama queen, mostly, can get pretty stubborn when it doesn't get its own way. And if you are fortunate to have, enough to have a Leo in your life, then... Um, I'm talking to you. So Leo, if you're lucky enough to have any Leos in your life, then you will know what I'm talking about. Sometimes they can be really stubborn. Yes, it's worth it, really. And uh, they can be really stubborn if they don't get their own way. Now, have you ever wondered why there are so many actors who are Leos? Because as I said, you know, the drama, their personalities are larger than life. Um, you know, they have a healthy sense of their own egos. And most, not all, this is this is not applicable to every single Leo, but like a lot of Leos like to be in the spotlight. Um, so they do make good friends. Now I'm giving you all these keywords for Leo because this is this is what's applicable this week with this total lunar super blue moon in Leo. This these are the keywords uh, for this energy. So it's all about grand gestures. That's another Leo, um, another Leo sort of keyword. Romance, and as I said, Venus planet of love is right next to the sun. So this is a very romantic time as well. Not of the ordinary sense because the love planet, love planet Venus in Aquarius is more about friendship. It's more about friendship um, rather than like, you know, somebody protesting their dying love to somebody else. Okay, so moving right along, talking more about this eclipse in Leo. So the thing is, this cycle of eclipses started in 2017. So it started in 2017 in February and then again in August. So the eclipses that are that starting now, this lunar eclipse that we're having on Wednesday, and again a solar eclipse on February 15th, and the solar eclipse will be in Aquarius. So the Leo Aquarius axis, axis is being axis is being triggered um, for all Leo Aquarians, and then also the other two fixed signs, Taurus and Scorpio. So this is this. I'm going to give you some more keywords so you can understand what to expect. They're fixed signs. So fixed signs, they want what they want, and they want you to agree that they're right. So this is the energy that's going on right now for the next, let's say, couple of weeks because of the solar eclipse coming up on February 15th. So the theme of the Leo Aquarius eclipses has been championing dark or hidden desires and deciding just who counts as us because that's the Aquarius energy. So you've got this whole democracy, we're all working together, we all like each other. But this is about change. This is about change. Eclipses bring change. Sometimes it's forced upon us, sometimes it's not. So 
it's it's Leo's focus focuses on the self, and Aquarius focuses on the collective. So we've got this we've got this thing going on where I said, remember, dictator or democracy type of thing. And I'm not really necessarily talking about politics. I'm just talking about this is the energy of these two sides, and this is what's going on at the moment. So. There's a lot of polarity, as there are with all signs that are opposite each other. So Leo loves the attention, so that's the leader, the dictator on the on the shadow side, and Aquarius loves progress. Um, so with the uh, influence of this Jupiter in Scorpio, it's all about bringing things out of the shadows. Uh, Leo is a very creative sign. And um, so with the Sun and Venus together, Venus is all about um, beauty, fairness, art. Uh, so it's interesting. It's an interesting mix. So it's not all, um, well, I guess with the Jupiter in Scorpio, see, there's a conflict here because you've got the Venus in Aquarius forming a square to, a square is a challenge or 90 degree aspect uh, to the Jupiter in Scorpio. So it's, it's, it's a mixed bag of energy. I, it, nothing is ever all good or all bad. There really is a whole um, mix of varying things going on. Uh, the Jupiter in Scorpio forming this T-square to the lunar eclipse could also involve legalities, anything uh, with to do with the law, I guess. Once again, not bringing up politics, but it's sort of like everything, what's going on in the news in the US uh, primarily. Um, really is sort of falling into place here with the current planetary energy. So anybody with the planets uh, 8 to 12 degrees of the fixed signs um, will be affected primarily with all these planetary influences. Uh, and as I talked about Mars last week, and then um, it's going to be hooking into these eclipses, turning retrograde, forms a square to Uranus, and then it's forming a square uh, in October to October, November with um, Venus retrograde. So the intensity really is the northern summertime. So uh, we're just starting. It's sort of like we're just getting into 2018. And so this is sort of just starting. The wheels are just turning um, for the rest of the year. So uh, I talked about the lunar eclipse, what it means. I've talked about Venus, what that means. Um, it's really great for networking with with the conjunction to Venus uh, from the Sun in this eclipse. It's all about social networking, networking, um, getting what we want, connecting with others, working as a group. It's a great time for brainstorming um, as well. Uh, also, if you're single, this is a really great time, especially if you're an Aquarian. This is amazing. Or you've got Venus in Aquarius, something like that. Um, now, with the involvement of Jupiter, so the Sun squaring to Jupiter is, it's sort of like overconfidence or um, it's, it's like overconfidence, excess, uh, inflation. It's things that it's sort of like hot air. Uh, anytime I think of the Sun, Jupiter connecting with a really, uh, with a tough aspect, it's uh, exaggeration, uh, overability, overreach, self-indulgence, uh, especially with this, um, with the moon influence in Leo. It's sort of like, it makes, it, it makes everything bigger. Uh, it exaggerates everything too much. Uh, some people won't be disciplined. Um, it's sort of like um, encouraging bad behavior, I would say, in some ways. Um, so what is it? It's overindulging. It's, um, there's no sort of boundaries. There's no like self-limitation. It's sort of like, you know, a lot of us are beating our chests at this time and um, exaggerating our, our capabilities and our emotions are sort of looming large because, as I said, with the super moon, the moon is closer to the earth at this time, and it's like uh, emotions are just fully, fully charged. They usually are with um, with eclipses, but this is uh, this is more so. Uh, be careful with purchases because Venus, it's planet of love and money, and it's forming the square to. Um, to Jupiter in Scorpio, which is all about excess and finances because Jupiter is in Scorpio. Uh, there's a lot to be said. It's sort of like, as I said, it's a mixed bag, but there's really a lot going on, and this is the start of it. Now, the other eclipses for 2018, we've got a solar eclipse in Aquarius on February 15th. It's at 27 degrees Aquarius. 
And then we've got a solar eclipse in Cancer, which is uh, nearly 21 degrees Cancer. Uh, that is going on in July. Uh, and that's, that's occurring July 12th. There's a solar eclipse in Cancer. We've got a lunar eclipse in Aquarius, July 27th at nearly 5 degrees. And then a solar eclipse in Leo on August 11th at 19 degrees. So if your birth date falls around any of those dates, uh, that's February 15th, uh, July 12th, July 27th, and August 11th, uh, you can expect a lot, a lot of changes. So how will this total lunar eclipse in Leo be affecting your sign? Well, here we go. If you're an Aries, uh, this is all, and you're single, this is not too shabby news for you. This is all about romance, courtship, entertainment, children, creativity. If you're a Taurus, uh, expect changes or intensity around the home and family, parents and ancestors. If you're a Gemini, uh, this, this lunar eclipse for you is triggering the intellect, uh, learning, communication, short trips, even um, things with siblings or maybe even neighbours. If you are a Cancer, this lunar eclipse is triggering your spending and saving habits, your possessions and your attitudes towards money in general. If you are a Leo, this lunar eclipse in your sign is affecting yourself and your appearance, your individuality. If you're a Virgo, tune in to your um, subconscious mind and psychic ability, uh, anything around dreams or intuition, pay attention to. If you're a Libra, this lunar eclipse will be uh, highlighting friends and acquaintances and groups, online, offline. If you're a Scorpio, this lunar eclipse will be uh, bringing intensity to your career. Uh, anything around your career will be highlighted now especially Jupiter, planet of luck, is in your own sign. If you are a Sagittarius, this is all about publishing, higher education, possibly any sort of legalities, any dealings with overseas or faraway places. If you are a Capricorn, this full moon lunar eclipse is highlighting um, your shared resources, what you have or share with other people, taxes, inheritance, any sort of insurance. If you're an Aquarius, uh, this... This lunar eclipse is highlighting your marriage and relationships and even business partnerships. And finally, if you are a Pisces, this lunar eclipse will be highlighting your health, diet, fitness, daily routine, pets, and any sort of employee. So that's it for the, the incredible level of detail for this, uh, this eclipse that's coming up this week, this lunar eclipse. Uh, it is definitely the headline of the week. And on that note, we're going to take a short break, so stay tuned. Conscious Connection, Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. Looking for inspiration? Want to be inspired? Not sure where to go. Find Mark and Kim every Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern on Inspired Living. Topics will elevate consciousness and range from metaphysics to the human and social experience and all things spiritual. Welcome to an inspired community that offers support, encouragement, and new ways of thinking. You are, you are the, inspired the inspired and the inspiration. inspiration.
This is a test to find out if you know it all when it comes to children. Name one of the leading killers of U.S. children age 1 to 13. What's the best way to protect children in a car crash? At what age and size should a child start using a booster seat? Don't assume you know it all when it comes to car seats for your child. Go to safercar.gov slash the right seat and know for sure. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Hi there, welcome back to The Astrology Show. I am your host and astrologer, Kelly Fox, talking about the planets this week. And I'm sure you've heard it everywhere else as well, but the, um, okay, I'm going to break this down. The full moon, the full moon supercharged lunar eclipse in Leo. It's a super moon. It's a blue moon. It's a total eclipse. Uh, and every time I say that, I always think of um, Total Eclipse of the Heart, that song. It's a total eclipse. It involves love planet Venus. It involves planet of excess Jupiter. All in six signs. The six signs, Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius. So if you are any of those signs or you have any planets in the fixed signs, I'm talking to you especially, uh, supercharged. This is the first of five eclipses for 2018. Uh, the next eclipse will be a solar eclipse on February 15th in Aquarius. So if you're born later in Aquarius or later in the fixed signs or even later in any sign, the solar eclipse February 15th will be affecting you. Then we've got a set of three eclipses uh, starting in July through August. Now, July, August promises to be a very intense time, not just because of the eclipses coming up, uh, but we've got uh, Mars forming a square to Uranus, so things will be explosive. Um, of course, there's a Mercury retrograde, which there always seems to be anyway, which communication snafus, and it's like you're speaking a different language. But anyway, I'm not going to launch into Mercury retrograde. Uh, there's, plenty of, there's plenty of opportunity to do that later on. So also this week, which gets completely overshadowed by the eclipse and that's all anyone's talking about, but also this week we have communication planet Mercury uh, moving into Aquarius where it will be until February 17th. So we've got a lot of fixed energy going on, you know, sun, moon. Uh, what else have we got here? Let me just take a look. The sun, moon, and of course Mercury, Venus, uh, Jupiter. So this is this is very stubborn, fixed energy. It's sort of like, um, you know, butting heads, butting heads uh, because we are very strong in our own opinions or people are not doing what we want because they're not working on our time frame. We want people to do what we want with all these, this sort of fixed energy, but nobody's giving, nobody's giving an inch. So with Mercury in Aquarius, Mercury is planet of the mind, it's planet of communication, uh, it's how we speak, it's how we take in information, it's how we process information. So with Mercury in Aquarius, Mercury likes Aquarius. It's one of the signs that it actually likes. And I say each time the planets have their favourite signs and their least favourite signs. Mercury is doing really well in Aquarius. So um, when Mercury's in Aquarius, this is very much about innovation. Uh, it's, it's very much about innovation and thinking outside the box. Um, it's also about um, coming up with brilliant ideas and innovations, um, flashes of inspiration that open our minds to unusual, unexpected possibilities. Um, and, you know, also hooking in with the, um, with the full moon lunar eclipse, it's like there's so much, um, so much progress can be made at this time. Um, so many unique and different things uh, can go on or solutions can be found because uh, also objectivity, rationality can help you get a higher perspective on everyday situations or issues that you might find you've been stuck in. So it's sort of like an innovative solution to an old problem when Mercury is in Aquarius, especially with all this like lunar eclipse energy going on as well because we're in eclipse season at this time. Um, so it's sort of like we're thinking a lot more logically than we are emotionally. 
so we're detached from our um, emotions, which is a good thing if you need to find solutions or come up with like um, come up with different solutions to um, problems that we might not have seen the solutions for previously. Um, uh, you know, again, it's a fixed sign, so it's like once we set our mind on something, it might be pretty hard to change it, which which is sort of good or bad. It depends. Depends. It just depends. Um, also, this is a great energy. Mercury in Aquarius for computers, electronics, science, um, taking methodical approaches to learning and thinking. Oh, the other thing with Mercury in Aquarius, social media and internet marketing uh, could be appealing at this time as well. Uh, also, idealism is high. Um, uh, Aquarius is a sign of the humanitarian and uh, very progressive thinking, um, futuristic type of thing, especially with the sun part of this lunar eclipse. So we've got the sun, Mercury and Venus going to be in Aquarius. Uh, so there, we've got the inner planets here with a lot of Aquarian energy. So it is a good time to um, think progressively and think, think, uh, Think for the collective good, I think, is a, a good way to say it. So as I said, Mercury Mercury moving into Aquarius, where it will be until February 17th. Um, so it's all about how we communicate. And there's all different types of communicators. And knowing what sign your Mercury in uh, helps to understand uh, ourselves first, always uh, understanding ourselves, and then we start to understand others. So that's Mercury in Aquarius, which is getting overshadowed by this lunar eclipse on Wednesday. But Mercury moves into Aquarius on Wednesday, where it will be until February 17th. So the other planetary influences this week, besides the lunar eclipse, which I think is enough in itself, and then Mercury moving into Aquarius. Um, the other influences are on Saturday, we have a couple. Like the whole week, there's, there's nothing else going on, but on Saturday, we've got um, Mercury in Aquarius will be forming a sextile to Mars in Sagittarius. So that's all about, um, it's an excellent time for communication and any sort of mental work and getting a lot of stuff done, really, because Mars is the planet of um, action, so getting stuff done. If you've got a lot of tasks to get through, a lot of activities, if you can save them through the end of the week, that's the best way to do it because it'll just be sort of churning through stuff. And then, of course, Venus in Aquarius forming a square to Jupiter in Scorpio. That is part of this lunar eclipse. It's also um, because, you know, Venus is with the sun and then Jupiter is forming this challenging aspect to both the sun and the moon. So it's all about overindulgence. So be very careful with overindulgence this week, uh, particularly because of that um, Venus forming a square to Jupiter. That is all about overindulgence. So if you're on a diet, uh, it might be a little bit tough to stick to it this week. It doesn't mean that you can't. It just means take care with. It's also all about spending. Because <clears throat> self-indulgence really means all areas of life, but particularly Venus being the planet of love and money. Um, it's like be careful with, let's say, retail therapy and not spending too much or not spending beyond your means. So be very careful, particularly towards the end of the week um, with uh, Venus forming a square to Jupiter. Jupiter is in the sign of Scorpio, which, which is about money. Uh, so just be careful. Don't overspend. Don't go beyond your budget. Uh, stick within your means. Don't go on a spending spree and curb the retail therapy and the overeating. Uh, so anything about excess. Um, and, you know, your inner child can just take a little break for a minute. It's like don't sort of, if, if there's upset around this eclipse because there's a lot of intense feelings, uh, don't sort of resort to um, being excessive in, you know, the diet or, or the shopping or, or whatever it is. It's a very indulgent uh, transit when Venus forms a square to Jupiter. So there you have it, the planetary influences uh, for the week. And, of course, the lunar eclipse is the big news. Now for your weekly horoscope. So if you're an Aries, um, you'll want to be taken seriously for your talents, but it's up to you to make sure that that actually happens. Um, why not shout loud and proud about what you can do 
but don't overpromise or underdeliver. Balance ego with genuine ability. If you're a Taurus, uh, there could be a small domestic crisis which causes chaos in your daily routine. But this only serves to underline how valuable normal actually is. We never appreciate the ordinary until we momentarily lose it. Uh, take time to give thanks uh, for your normal situation. And if you're a Gemini, uh, this lunar eclipse stimulates your desire to learn and to grow. Uh, maybe you want to go back to school or teach yourself a new skill. And while you're at it, share your love of knowledge with others too. Uh, you make a fantastic mentor when you're in this mood, Gemini. If you are a Cancer, uh, you might expect difficult financial news, but don't panic. Uh, you can manage with far less than you think. Uh, these lunar eclipse energies are here to teach you that what you think you value and what you truly value are not necessarily the same thing. Uh, if you are a Leo, the lunar eclipse in Leo encourages you to stand on your own two feet. Uh, take steps to carve out your own identity at work, in the family and in your own relationship as well. And it's time to make your voice heard, Leo. If you are a Virgo, extremely vivid dreams this week are accompanied by a sense of knowing. Uh, the cosmos is pulling out all of the stops to communicate with your higher self. You simply have to learn to listen and to recognize the signs. And if you're a Libra, go ahead and rock the diplomatic boat. And it's not like you to speak out of turn, but you're fed up playing nicely while others do not. Uh, say what needs to be said. The lunar eclipse encourages you to speak out regardless of the consequences. If you're a Scorpio, well, trouble with authority figures looms large as the lunar eclipse tips you against the higher ups, whomever they may be. So stand your ground and insist on being heard. Be a voice for those who are normally overlooked and underconsidered. Because with the energies of the Moon, Venus, and then Mercury in Aquarius, it's all about taking care of everybody. And then Leo, of course, likes to support the underdog as well. So there's a lot of pressure for Scorpio for standing up to do the right thing. If you are a Sagittarius, uh, this lunar eclipse is all about taking a leap of faith, especially where travel is involved. Say yes to an opportunity, even though you don't know the full detail. Trust that the path will reveal itself in due course. Be bold. If you are a Capricorn, this week's lunar eclipse offers you the chance to break free from a restrictive, toxic or suffocating job, relationship or situation. It will take courage, but it can be done. The cosmos is behind you on this. So don't tolerate the intolerable any longer. And I have to say, Capricorn, especially with Pluto and Saturn, both in your sign. They're the two heavy hitters of the zodiac. And so what that means is with Saturn and Pluto going to be right on your sun one time or another, it's a time for change. It's definitely a time for change. Uh, and you being a cardinal sign, uh, change shouldn't come to you as difficult as it might for the other signs. But this is all about thinking, and I keep harping on every show, Think of the long term. Think of the long term with Saturn and Pluto both in Capricorn at this time. If you are an Aquarius, this is big news because uh, the lunar eclipse marks a turning point in your relationship. If what you have is strong, your love can now grow still further. If you are in trouble in your relationship, this could be the signal to walk away once and for all. Know that your decision is for the best, as hard as it might be. Uh, 2018 is definitely a time for change and transformation, especially if you're Aquarius, especially with your relationships. And finally, if you are a sweet Pisces, a health-related shock brings you to your senses this week and the lunar eclipse energies prompt you to pay much greater attention to the mind-body-spirit connection. Uh, nurture yourself from now on across three levels of all of your being. So what that means is, Pisces, you always tend to put others before yourself and this might catch up to you. Um, a lot of Pisces are psychic or very intuitive people 
which means they're also empaths. So an empath means taking on the energies of other people, uh, even when you subconsciously, you do it subconsciously and you don't realize consciously that's what you might be doing. So this is really, really important to take care of yourself this week with the lunar eclipse because it's triggering um, all about your health or your day-to-day -day routines. Uh, and especially with this square aspect from Jupiter, uh, it's all about excess. So take it easy and wishing everybody all the very best for this week with the lunar eclipse. I'm your host and astrologer, Kelly Fox, and this is The Astrology Show. Have a great week.